गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस दिस चैप्टर डेमोग्राफिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द इंडियन सोसाइटी सो एज यू पीपल कैन सी इट्स रिटर्न इट कैरी सिक्स मार्क्स इन द सी बी एस ई बोर्ड एग्जामिनेशन सो एज ऑफ नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट नियरली विद द ओवरव्यू ऑफ द चैप्टर आई विल टेल यू वॉट आर द मेजर हेडिंग्स दैट हैव टू बी इंक्लूडेड इन दिस चैप्टर एंड वॉट आर द बेसिक सब थीम्स दैट वी विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल इन द फोर्थ कमिंग लेक्चर्स so as you people can see there are four major headings in this chapter as written here so the first is demography and introduction the second heading is theories of demography the third heading is basic concepts of demography and the fourth heading is the population policy of india so let me just give you a little more idea about what each of this major heading entails so as you can see the first heading is demography and introduction so in the introduction there are three basic things that we will discuss the first is the demo, the definition of demography so as we can see demography is a word that comes from two greek words demos and graphene so demos in the literal sense means population and graphene in its literal sense means study so the definition of demography is systematic study of the population the next thing is the types of demographic studies that we are going to discuss so the two types of demographic studies in the chapter that is mentioned are formal demography and social demography the third main thing that we will discuss in this heading of demography and introduction is the importance of demography why do you think demography as a study is important for sociology the next major heading is theories of demography in this we have two major theories that we will discuss the first theory is the theory malthusian theory of population growth the second theory that we will discuss largely is the theory of demographic transition the third major heading is the basic concepts of demography in this basic concepts of demography as an heading we have innumerable terms and definitions that we will define and further try to understand and analyze why they are so important in formulating demography as a area of study so as i mentioned here birth rates death rates sex ratio dependency ratio demographic dividend literacy rates and some more terms are the key terms that we will discuss and we will also discuss why they are so important in this chapter the last heading that i have written over here which is of importance to us and is mentioned deeply in this chapter is population policy of india so when we talk about population policy of india it is very interesting to understand that india is one of the countries which is largely populated or is most largely populated and you will be able to see that india was just one or is just one country which has a kind of a proper population policy for itself and it has had this policy quite some time back also but there is a difference in the population policy of india that india has right now and what it had before emergency so what is the kind of a difference we are going to have a kind of a contrast to it so with this kind of an overview that i have given you for the chapter now we will start with the next headings and that to in detail so now moving ahead now i am going to discuss a little more detail about all the headings that we have just covered in the overview the first heading that i have already mentioned is demography and introduction so the first thing that is mentioned here is the definition of demography so when we look at the definition of demography it comes from two greek words which are demos and graphene demos in its literal sense translates to population while graphene in its literal sense is converted to study so when we are trying to define the term demography it is the systematic study of the population i am repeating it is the systematic study of the population you are studying the population but in a very well defined systematic manner okay the next thing is types of demographic studies so there are two types of demographic studies the formal and the social the formal one is quantitative in nature the work is largely of enumeration and the example that i have given is census 
So when we talk about formal demography, it basically means that it is quantitative. Quantitative means that you're largely dealing with numbers. So since you're dealing largely with numbers, the basic character of the study is to just enumerate. Enumerate, what does the word enumerate mean? It basically means to count. So you are counting, thus quantitative in nature. So one of the classical example is the example of census. What are we doing in census? So if you just uh, recollect uh, an experience where a census is taking place, you will be able to see that there's a person who comes to your home. He or she will ask you about the details of your family and your personal work. So they'll ask you how many members are there in your family? How many are males? How many are females? How many are working? How many are not working in your family? Is there anybody who's disabled in the family? So on and so forth. So what they're doing is they are merely calculating the data for the further reference for the government purposes. Okay. So when we are talking about census, there is something that I want you to remember, which is the American census of 1790. Why is this census so important? Because we need to understand that this census was one of the most earliest form of very systematic census that was conducted in the world. So please remember this American census because there might be a one marker question that might ask you which was the first systematic form of census that has ever been taken place in the world. So the answer is American census of 1790. The next is the social form of demographic studies. So it's much similar to the formal one, but it's more of an extension to the formal one. So they say it is largely qualitative in nature. Why is it qualitative in nature? Because it's not dealing much with the enumeration. Enumeration bit is already done by the formal part. We are largely dealing with analysis of this enumerated data. So in social form of demographic studies, what we do is, we look at these numbers that have been collected and we try to analyze the basic structural forms of, uh, you could say, trends that are coming out, out of this enumerated data. So, for example, I have given you the example of bipoles over here. Bipoles, what are bipoles? Bipoles are basically when you're collecting the data to understand which political party is going to win. So, what are we doing in this case? Bipole becomes a kind of a social demography a subject where we are trying to understand through the enumerations that what kind of a political trend is coming up. Okay, so again, these two terms are very, very important for the distinguishing purposes. For the simple reason, there might be a question that says differentiate between formal demography and social demography. It could be a two marker. I'm repeating the question. It is distinguish between formal demography and social demography as a two marker. The last bit of this heading demography and introduction is the importance of demographic studies. So since I've already discussed in the overview that demography talks about birth rates, death rates, literacy ratio, dependency ratio, so on and so forth. So what is the importance for something like demography as a subject? Subject importance for demography is that it helps for better surveillance, better governance and an overall economic, political and social development can take place of the nation state because of the demographic data that we collect. I can give you an example. The example is, for example, Beti Bachao, Beti Padao Andol. How did this campaign actually start? It started because when you were looking through the census data, you were able to understand and analyze that somewhere the sex ratio is not working properly and it is in a disequilibrium. And there are certain states that are massively failing in maintaining the natural sex ratio. As a result, the government had to come out with campaigns just like Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao Andodin, where they are kind of giving a help or extending and help to the people to promote the idea of female education and abolish the idea of female infanticide or for that matter female feticide. So we can understand when such campaigns coming through we are socially developing. 
Similarly, we have a lot of economic kind of developments giving subsidies, for example. It's a kind of an economic development that the government gives. So you can see there are a lot of farmer relief packages that come out through. Why are these farmer relief packages actually coming in certain states? It's largely because of the data that is collected through enumerative exercises that help us know that there are certain places where economic development is required. So with this, I think you people have been able to understand that when we talk of demography as an introduction, we need to know the definition of demography. We need to know the types of demography and what is the sense of distinction between them. And we also need to know the importance of demography as a subject.